Hi everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tiana Bui and welcome. For those of you who are new to my channel, this is where I share some of the advice that I've picked up navigating through the sustainability career journey because I know firsthand that it can definitely be tough navigating that type of space, but hopefully um, with some of the videos that I come out with, it can definitely help in some way. And so as the title mentioned, this video is gonna be about my sustainability slash ESG journey, whatever you wanna call it, bringing you into what I did in school, as well as how I navigated my career. And so before we begin, if you do wanna see more videos like this or found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all throughout, Please don't be afraid to pop it into the comments below because the more questions you ask, the more it might help someone else who probably also has the same question or don't feel afraid to reach out to me um, on LinkedIn or Instagram to ask me questions there as well. And if you wanna see more of me, then please hit the subscribe button. It will definitely let me know that this is something I should keep on doing. And so with that, let's begin. And so starting off with undergrad, I attended UCR for my first two years of college. And honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I majored in business. I thought about doing psychology. I did media and cultural studies. And overall, what I realized is that I had no clue what end career path I wanted. And so where everything changes is that one of my friends told me that the intro to environmental science class was an easy A course. And me being someone who isn't the super, super smartest in school, I could have used that easy A. And so took that class, but little did I know I would talk about it nonstop to every single person that I encountered while taking that class. I would go home and tell my mom about what I was learning. Like, did you know that carbon is released because of us? And then it gets sucked into the ocean and then it destroys the food value chain. And then it in turn affects us. I just thought the whole cycle was so crazy and interconnected. And it was something that wasn't quite talked about in my community because the community that I came up in was in Orange County and Garden Grove specifically and um, at the time you know what was really emphasized on being first gen is that my parents were really hard working they wanted me to get a really good job that was high paying the typical Asian jobs that you all are aware of but yeah I decided from that class that I was gonna major in environmental science so while that UCR one of the things that I really wanted to do was to transfer out and that was because at UCR there wasn't its own environmental department. I think at the time they just created the sustainability major. And so during my second year of college, worked really hard in all my classes and I actually was really lucky to get accepted to UCI um, for my last two years. I did get off the wait list and so for those of you who are really wondering like, oh, I'll just go to university and then already plan on transferring later on, I would totally recommend for you to just go to community college first because the chances of you actually, you know, transferring out after those couple of years is a lot less than starting at community college. Okay, so at UCI, I was majoring in Earth System Sciences from a Bachelor of Science and minored in Digital Arts. It was really great because the department, as I realized, was, you know, developed a lot more than Riverside's. And it was great because when I was taking more of the focus classes for my major, they were a lot smaller and so the professors did have a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with you and you'd also realize that the people that you're surrounded with they wanted to do a lot more than themselves because that was the thing with being in the environmental industry you're thinking about the world that's unforeseen like in the future you know what i'm saying and so i'm sure if you guys are majoring in this you guys can agree but that's what i've been experiencing while at uci the core classes i took really emphasized on the sciences it focused on learning about the oceans soil the atmosphere another thing that was emphasized was data analysis and understanding research methods for the upper div classes the one that i focused on was really water related because at the time i was really interested in improving the water quality and water processes also focused on the technical skills as well and so i know i did take like art gis and 
took an advanced version of data analysis to learn more programs. So in terms of my internships at the moment, it really did focus on marketing and communications roles. That was basically the type of work that I was interested in. So making newsletters, doing graphic designing, editing videos, doing social media campaigns and all that good stuff. But then at the same time, I was also doing undergraduate research. For my first one that I did, I was part of a graduate student's research lab, helping to go to Newport Beach, collect water samples and filter out the certain compounds and nutrients that needed to be measured. But then realized at some point that the lab life wasn't for me. Water is important, don't get me wrong, but it definitely wasn't my cup of tea when I was going through it. And so realized maybe I should emphasize something that's more related to the social aspect that environmental um, topics can relate to. And so in talking to the different professors in our department, there was a new one who came aboard and his emphasis is more on agriculture and food. And so developed the start of a research project that I believe is still going on right now that is trying to relate CSR, which is corporate social responsibility. For those of you who aren't sure what that is, it's about, you know, like corporations making these pledges and commitments to be more sustainable and ethical and have socially good impacts, but then trying to tie a company's CSR goals and seeing if it relates to what they're serving um, through their food and so through that experiment really did focus on big corporations that served food. It wasn't until I was taking a water policy class where the professor mentioned that we really needed more science communicators out there that can reach a broader audience more effectively or any certain audiences more effectively and when she said that it made me think okay, so I guess there is a market for science communicators, maybe environmental communicators, but that also made me realize that there's probably a lot of jobs that I haven't heard of yet besides like research, policy, and law. And so that prompted me to go and try to apply to grad school. And so the important lesson from undergrad was one, really do try majoring in anything that you can that you feel like you're interested in and so like i mentioned i majored in business um, i majored almost in psychology i majored in media and cultural studies i almost majored in music too because i was getting so into that as well really if you're interested in anything take a class in it that's when you'll find out more and then also don't be afraid to talk to your professors when you're there i definitely since i knew i was paying for my own college i was like i gotta learn as much as i can at the people who know it best are the professors so i go to their office hours not just to talk about my classwork but also to just ask like oh besides being a professor like what kind of jobs can i get in it another thing i learned is that it's really important to start interning and researching as soon as possible you really want to get as much professional skills before you enter the workforce as much as possible because that's what employers are going to look for and it's just such a common trend for college students to be doing right now so if you don't do at least one you're already going to look like you're a lot more behind than the other people graduating college and i would say the last thing that i learned in college is to really just trust your gut and where you feel like your direction might be you at your core know what's right for you like i don't know what it was I knew that I wanted to do it the environmental field. I didn't know what job I wanted exactly. I didn't even know what <laughs> all the jobs were that I could do um, until later on in my life. And there were a lot of things going against me, like with my family and stuff. I love them and they're supportive. But in that, like I got asked questions all the time from my media and my extended family, like, oh, climate change isn't real. Like, what job are you gonna get? And it was always concerning. It was really stressful for me to go to family functions, but um, I mean, I made it. Yes. And so that's what happens when, you know, you really just trust your gut and know that what you're gonna do, you're gonna work hard in, and that's all you can really go on. Okay, so grad school. <laughs> what a time but i went to the brent school at the university of california santa barbara and my program was a two-year program and i ended up getting my master's for environmental science and management my specialization was in corporate management and my minor or focus was in strategic communications because Again, can't let that go, but this is all gonna come back, I, I swear. So I chose to go to Brent School for many reasons. When I applied, I only applied to three schools, then lost hope that I'd ever get in, but then thankfully made it to all three. I chose the Brent School because it's really known and there's a lot of alumni 
especially on the west coast and in the u.s where i can connect with and ask for advice for and so decided to go there yeah immediately had imposter syndrome <laughs> imposter syndrome and was one of the youngest students there all my colleagues were in their mid-20s late 20s early 30s sometimes 40s and whew, it definitely was a lot the first month for me but after a while i did talk to some of the older colleagues and i decided okay instead of feeling like i don't belong here because i'm a young lady um i was gonna use this opportunity to talk to my colleagues about their work experiences because i realized there were so many people from everywhere some was in film some were in policy some were in business like there's just so many people from everywhere and it was a great chance for me to inquire them about their working experiences seeing if that's something i actually wanted to do and so um, i was very lucky to have those conversations with um, my colleagues at the time to help guide and shape what i wanted to do and so for the first year at bren a lot of the classes that we were taking were very interdisciplinary these are our core classes so they call it but it consists of business econ law policy environmental science um, data analysis and just gave a good basis and a well-rounded education about all the different aspects that are related to the environmental industry which is pretty much every single or almost every single topic there is to study along with my classes i was able to also secure a fellowship with southern california edison this is a really cool project because it was all about rebranding this outreach program in la that helped give rebates and subsidies to um, lower in class communities and then gave them access you know to buy energy efficient appliances to decrease their monthly electricity bills and all that good stuff we had to utilize research that we we're finding that was relevant to marketing to that type of community and then building content around what we found through our research and going out and interviewing community members um, i was mainly the person who created the graphics for uh, the printed materials as well as the ones that they had online and then also was in charge of editing a lot of the videos and so it was, it was just such a cool process that not only connected like the storytelling aspect but then also the environmental justice piece and overall it would help to reduce carbon emissions in LA and so there's just so many assets to it that I was really interested in and from that experience realized that I really wanted to do something similar to this um, in the real world and so that was probably one of the important lessons that I learned during my first year. Now during my second year, a lot of my classes was focused on corporate management and then also since I was minoring in communications, this is where I was able to take a lot of my classes in storytelling um, and social media campaigns and all that good stuff. For the communications minor, I did complete a capstone project where I was helping a startup company with branding their company, making the website, their LinkedIn page, and infographics for them, and working with a small team to interview some of the stakeholders in there, as well as competitors, and seeing what types of information were important to put on the website and creating that brand. And then also got to work with another small team for my master's thesis, here we were helping adidas adidas whatever understanding how much microplastic abraded from the outsoles of shoes using real life data because this information can be derived from the lab but they never really have it done using real life people and so the whole experiment was conducted around that um, question and my role really did focus on that outreach component to our volunteers just being that liaison between our volunteers trying to pump them up educate them more about microplastics and our everyday lives and then was a person to help with a lot of the communications and the storytelling aspects what i learned there is that i was really interested in consumer products we focus on sustainability right on consuming less but the fact in my opinion is that people aren't going to stop buying things like i'm sure even if you're an environmentally cautious person you're still purchasing things pretty much all the time um, and so if there's a way that I can work for a consumer company consumer product company sorry and try to switch out some of the materials that they're using or just making it more sustainable then I feel like that would be such a great thing for me to do and so along with those experiences 
throughout the two years I was also TAing and so if you didn't know and I realized a lot of students didn't know this but if you TA while you're a grad student chances are you don't have to pay tuition and then you also get a stipend so from that I basically was going and got my master's degree for free I definitely found this out when I was talking to some of the TAs way back in undergrad trying to understand like oh should I even go back to school like I don't have money like I'm already taking out loans to go to undergrad and they're like no 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 just just get a TA ship and you'll be all set and so that was definitely my focus when I started grad school and I'm very thankful that they shared that with me so now here sharing it back to you guys but when I was TAing it was honestly the joy of my week <laughs> because grad school can be really hard but I was able to interact with students all the time every week like three times a week yeah at least three times a week and I felt like I built pretty strong relationships with some of the students and our friends with some of them even today and it's been really cool to see their growth throughout these last couple of years since I met them from that that experience realized that I cared about teaching to some aspect and think that that was my strength in communicating like trying to educate and teach people the biggest lessons I did learn in grad school was one, there are so many jobs out there that you can have. You can have in comm, science, policy, law, business, econ, start a business. Like there's just so many things that you can do in it. And that was such a great blessing to understand because that was honestly the hugest question I had. Another thing that I realized is that grad school is such a great resource for networking. Like I mentioned before, Bren is really well known on the West Coast in the US and so I was able to meet so many different alumni and ask for their advice. I was honestly cold calling or cold emailing about 20 to 30 of them. As I started interviewing at certain big companies, I noticed that there are brand alumni everywhere. And so definitely a great resource for networking overall. And then lastly, grad school is freaking hard. It's like, I remember I was only sleeping like four to five hours a night because I got involved in too many things. Like I mentioned my classes and my thesis, my fellowship, and I was TAing. So there was just a lot of things for me to do overall. Would I recommend grad school? I would say yes, it depends on your situation. Like, do you really need to go? I, I think that would be the first question. Are you stuck in your career and you feel like this can help you get to where you wanna be? then yes, go ahead and do it. If you're able to get to where you want to be without going to grad school, it would save you a lot of time and money. But I mean, if you need to go, you need to go. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, getting your master's or your PhD versus not. But what I can also say is that in the industry, if you do want to move up, I think it is common to see people with a master's. And there are so many programs opening up these days. And so know that it probably will be important to have in the future but i mean that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have it you know just because you have degrees doesn't mean you're going to get the job you want you have to put in the hard work and there are many pathways to get to where you want to be okay so now for my career so graduating through the pandemic was so hard i lost all motivation in myself i thought i sucked as a person I mean, I mean, you can't help it, right? It's like you go out of school having these expectations, you don't meet those expectations, and then you feel like crap. And I'm just being honest, that's how I felt. I obviously don't feel that now, but you know, people can grieve and have that sad moment in life sometimes. But when I was graduating, it was so hard for me to find a communication sustainability job. Um, like a solid one with a good team that I was comfortable in working in. Um, but what I was able to do in the meantime was I ended up <laughs> freelancing as a graphic designer, which is so crazy because I know that I loved graphic designing while I was in grad school and did that for a lot of my projects. And on the side and with the um, Southern California Edison project that I was a part of, I was also doing more communication education internships. But when I was doing those things, it was really great and I felt like this is where I wanted to be, but there is something missing inside me a little bit. I remember the reason why I wanted to be in sustainability was because I wanted to help solve problems in certain ways. Um, and so really missed that critical thinking type of problem solving um, situations and realized that I wanted to do something that included comms, but also was more of a problem solving um, type of job. 
And so that prompted me to wanting to try consulting because in one of the classes I took, a consulting lady came in, talked about her experience, but her bottom line was just telling us that consulting is really great if you don't know what you want to do. So you can get a lot of exposure in different areas. And so that's what I did. I applied to, for consulting, got a job in it, loved it, loved everyone that I met there. But you know, um, in that space, you can either like it or it might not be for you. And for me, when I was in consulting, I focused in greenhouse gas inventories, um, did some sustainability reporting, and helped with some data visual dashboards. It was such a great experience. I loved working with the global team. They're really dedicated, hardworking, and passionate, and definitely did get to dig my feet into a lot of different things. Um, not even just what I was working on, but what my fellow colleagues were working on. They were doing other works like water assessment, like risk, climate, and opportunity climate risks and opportunities, doing materiality assessments, trying to understand other sustainability reporting platforms, and there's just so much to learn, you know, and so many different services. And it was a great experience overall to help a lot of different types of clients, like who are in foods, who are also in consumer products, tech, but then also big, large, and small um, types of companies. And so definitely really great, well-rounded experience. I would say the reason why I transitioned out of it was mainly because for me, and this is very typical in consulting, like you all work long hours. And in the case for me, I was working long hours during the busy season. And when it wasn't the busy season, I was still working a lot and it really, kind of burn me out to be honest because I'm someone who wanted to do side projects like wanted to start this channel and have time to dedicate to this during some point of the day um, but in consulting I realized if I kept doing it I don't think I'd have time to do this stuff and so realized that having time to me is really important in my job um, and so wanted to transition elsewhere. Another reason why, and it was probably my fault a little bit too, was that I was stuck kind of just doing green ass gas work all the time. And green ass gas work, don't get me wrong, like it was really interesting, fun. It had me understand the business operations, what goes into its upstream and downstream, the whole value chain. But I really did want to try to do some other things, such as more of the sustainability reporting to do more of the calm stuff, or just trying to build another technical skill since I was still on, you know, an entry level type of role, but unfortunately wasn't able to experience that there. And so realized that maybe in-house might give me that more well-rounded experience and seeing where it is that I want to be. And so I was really lucky to land the current job that I have at a big, great corporation. Only have worked there a week, so still learning the ropes with everything. So some of the important lessons that I learned from consulting is, I know through this whole video, I've been talking about wanting comms and creativity and storytelling to be part of my job or be the main focus of my job. But what I realized and something that I was told in grad school, but pretty much just missed it, was that comms is really important in any sustainability job that you have, or I mean, any technical, sciencey job, um, political job, whatever. Uh, it's because you know you can maybe you're a researcher who's found a new clean energy solution and what you're really good at is all the numbers in that research but then if you're not able to explain that to a politician or to someone that needs to hear it to launch that innovation then it's like really what's the point of you doing that and so that's something that I learned and something that is really important in especially the environmental field being able to communicate our results to people who need to see it to create action and so that's what um, i found and made me realize that maybe i don't have to just be someone who graphic designs or does something like just writing blog posts only which is some of the things i was doing in my freelance career and i mean i still do it on my free time to make some extra cha-ching you know what i'm saying but definitely didn't fill my cup all the way like there was just a component missing and um like i mentioned it was that technical part i mean i did go to school and learned all these really in-depth processes for a reason and wanted to have more of that problem solving element there um, and so i did realize this especially in consulting another thing that i realized and i mentioned before is that a lesson i learned is that time is really important to me i know it's really important to everyone but i feel like if i wasn't someone who is 
so focused on also wanting to do a side gig for myself like with this youtube channel then i feel like consulting would be totally fine for me um, because i'd have more time for it but it's just the matter of the fact is that i wanted to be able to have a better work and life balance for myself and if you're into that high fast-paced environment 24 7 deadline heavy always on the go then you go for it. <laughs> the last thing I learned is that there are just so many expertise, especially in corporate sustainability. There are just definitely so many different things that you can do. So like I mentioned, after consulting, I'm currently in my in-house job, which I have been enjoying so far, being managed by one of the alumni from um, my school, my grad school. And so really excited to keep going on and cheering of how that experience is after a couple of months. Um, and so hope you guys stay tuned for that. But again, thank you guys so much for having the time to sit and listen to this. I hope you guys are having a great day. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask and comment below. I'm sure there's other people who have similar questions as you, um, but yeah, please don't feel, feel hesitant. I know, I know it can be tough sometimes, but gotta do it. <laughs> And so I will see you guys next time and until then, bye! <laughs>